Hello everyone, welcome to In 5 Minutes. In this video, we are going to see the architecture of TMS 320 C6X. This type of device can execute up to 32 bit instructions per cycle. This consists of program fetch unit, instruction dispatch unit, instruction decode unit, control registers, control logic, test, emulation, and interrupt logic. Parallel execution of 8 instructions. It can support 8 16 32 bit data which can provide efficient memory support for variety of applications. 40 bit arithmetic operations can also be performed. So these are some features of this processor. Now let us see each block one by one. First we see the central processing unit. The CPU contains the program fetch unit, instruction dispatch unit and instruction decode unit. The CPU fetches very long instruction word that is 256 bit wide to supply 8 32 bit instructions to 8 functional units during every clock cycle. The VLIW architecture features controls by which all 8 units do not have to be supplied with instructions if they are not ready to execute. The first bit of every 32-bit instruction determines if the next instruction belongs to same execute packet or it should be executed in the following clock cycle as a part of next execute packet. Now the fetch packets are always 256 bits wide but they can vary in size. The variable length is the key feature that differentiates C67X CPU from other VLIW architectures. Now the CPU also contains two data paths which contains registers A and B. Now each data path has four functional units namely L, M, S and D. They stand for logic, multiply, shifting and data address operation. All data transfers between the register files and memory takes place only through data addressing units that is D1 and D2. The CPU also has various control registers, control logic and test emulation and logic. Now this access to control registers is provided from data path B. Now we move on to general purpose registers. The CPU contains two general purpose registers. They are A and B. This can be used for data or data address pointers. Now each file that is the register contains 16 32 bit registers that is A0 to A15 and B0 to B15. The set of registers A1, A2, B0 to B2 are used as condition registers. The registers A4 to A7 and B4 to B7 are used for circular addressing. These registers also provide 32-bit and 40-bit fixed point data. The 32-bit can be stored in any register. For 40-bit processing, the processor stores least significant 32 bits in an even register and remaining 8 bits in upper register that will be odd register. Now let's move on to functional units. The CPU has two sets of functional unit. Each set contains four units and a register file. The first set contains a functional unit L1, S1, M1, D1 and the other set is D2. M2, S2 and L2. The two register files each contain 16 32 bit registers for a total of 32 bit general purpose registers. Now these two sets of functional units along with two register files compose sides A and B of CPU. The functional units L1, S1, M1, D1 write to register file A and similarly this set write to register file B. As each unit has its own 32-bit write port, all 8 ports can be used in parallel in every cycle. Now let us see the memory system of TMS320C 67XS series. Now as it is a digital signal processor, it uses modified Harvard architecture, which provides separate address space for instruction and data memory. Now this processor uses a two-level cache-based architecture. 
द लेवल वन प्रोग्राम कैश दैट इज एल वन पी इज अ फोर के बाई डायरेक्ट मैप कैश एंड एल टू पी दैट इज द लेवल टू प्रोग्रामेबल कैश कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू फिफ्टी सिक्स किलो बाइट मेमोरी स्पेस दैट इज शेयर बिटवीन प्रोग्राम एंड डेटा स्पेस नाउ लेट एस सी द पेरीफरल्स ऑफ दिस डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसर